<laughs> okay, so I'm going to put up two slides. I want you guys all to breathe all the air out your lungs. Okay, Come now hold on, your breath. That's me. This waiver is held down for 40 seconds. So that's going to be the first two slides. The next slide is also me. Um, now think of being underwater. South African rugby team sitting on top of you. You're like in a washing machine. It's dark. You don't know where you are. You don't know where you're going. You don't know if you're going to come up. Um, still holding your breath? Two slides, eh? That's me going left. Same thing happened. Down for 40 seconds. Yeah, hard to explain what it's like. Yeah, want to die. You think you're going to die. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what it's like. Um, <laughs> it's wet, yeah. So for those, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, big wave surfing is catching or riding waves in excess of 30 to 50 foot faces. In the past couple of years, or you may have seen people toe surfing. Um, in the past couple of years, however, there's been a move towards a purer form of the sport, which involves paddling into and catching the biggest waves possible. It's obviously a lot more dangerous because you, know, you don't have the jet ski there to assist you. All you've got is your arms, your leash, and your board to try and put you in these difficult situations to catch the waves. The thing that separates big wave surfing from other sports is um, that you know, the Olympics, you know, athletes have the Olympics on a set date. Mountain bikers, you can perfect your line down a mountain. Rock climbers can perfect a rock climb up a mountain. <laughs> um, at the most, we're given a seven-day forecast. You know, we study charts, we try and read the charts, we look at, at reports of winds thousands of miles out to sea, but you never really know what's going to happen until the day that you wake up and there's supposed to be big waves. So you always have to be ready, you always have to be ready to catch the biggest wave of your life. You know, you have to, you have to sacrifice everything to catch these waves. <laughs> so when that swell does come, you know, if you've got meetings, you've got to throw meetings away, you've got to ditch girlfriends, blow friends, <laughs> lo lost lots of girlfriends like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then there might be no waves, so, you know. It's <laughs> try and explain that to someone. So yeah, I'm currently competing on the Big Wave World Tour, which consists of six events around the world. Uh, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Hawaii, California. Um, yeah, I've been surfing big waves a long time, traveling the world, and finally I've just got invited to this event, which has been amazing, the one in Chile. There's only 24 people invited, so it's a huge honor just to be invited. <laughs> <laughs> The next problem is getting there, obviously. Competitive big wave surfing is a really new sport, so there's not that many sponsors available. And, and um, yeah, it's hard to find support, but uh, luckily, thanks to Red Bull, they, they said they'd send me to, to Chile, which is pretty amazing. The next problem is that each contest has a two-month waiting period, which means for two months, you basically have to sit at home and check your email, because you're only given 48 hours to get to the event. So. You know, you can't really do anything, you can't go anywhere, you can't really have a real job because you might be in a meeting or something and... <laughs> yeah, that's actually Mexico, but anyway. Um, yeah, you can't have a real, well, you can have a real job, I choose not to, but... Um, <laughs> so yeah, there I was sitting, I think it was the 25th of May, having coffee with an ex-girlfriend, <laughs> um, and I got an email, I was like, yeah, you have to get to Santiago, Chile, um, Punta de Lobos, that's the wave, I'd never been there before, I'd never been to Chile, you know, I packed my bags as fast as I can, got to the airport, got on the plane, got to this place I've never been before, I don't know the people, I didn't speak the language, it was a four-hour drive to that place, Punta de Lobos, where the wave was, I had no idea what to expect, never been there before. Woke up in the morning, there were thousands of people on the beach. There was a huge rock in front of the wave. No one <laughs> told me about it. The waves were 20 foot plus. And uh, yeah, I was in the first heat. So the guy handed me my vest and he goes, yeah, you're in the first heat. I was like, oh, where'd I paddle out? He's like, right in front of that rock. I was like, <laughs> okay, I, you can't even paddle out there. <laughs> it's just a giant rock. And he's like, no, you just go there and you go here. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I get there, have the... Six, uh, five, six people in heat, I have four of the best big wave servers in the world in my first heat, and I was like, 
okay? I've never been here. I have hardly slept. I've been on a plane for 48 hours. Um, yeah, that was one of the first waves of the contest. When I was paddling out, I was like, great. You know, like, my surfboards were broken in the plane. Um, so yeah, it's a daunting task to not only compete, but know that you have to perform. There's pressure from, from people to do well. And obviously to yourself, you go halfway around the world. You have one day in two months to prove to everyone that you can do it. And um, more importantly, to prove to yourself. So my first heat, paddle out, you know, I sat around for ages, guys were paddling past me, I thought everyone was going to be like, buddy, buddy. Didn't really work like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like talking to these guys are my heroes, I'm like, hey bro, like, I've seen you in all the magazines. Like, but uh, they were just like paddle straight past me anyway. <laughs> so anyway, once they all paddled past me, um, I saw this giant set coming, I was like, whoa, this is my chance, I gotta go. Yeah, I turned, paddled for the wave. All the guys had caught one, so yeah, everyone was screaming, go, 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 go. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I wanted to go. I mean, you have to go. It's, it's what I love doing. And in that moment, paddling for this giant wave, you don't really think about anything except catching that wave. You don't think about Facebook or anything else in your <laughs> life. <or anything. laughs> it's a real moment of clarity. I don't know if you... If you, if you see those waves and, and you're out there, really nothing else matters. It's complete survival mode. It's not, nothing I can explain to you. I cannot explain it to you unless you're out there. And yeah, I got this big wave. Um, I was lucky enough, kind of made it to the bottom um, and uh, got absolutely destroyed at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> turned out to get the cover of the new zigzag with that wave. Uh, won my heat. And um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I made it to the next round. Unfortunately, the next round was the semifinals. I just missed making the final by a 0.5. Um, but yeah, amazing experience. Really, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and tell us a little bit, tell us a little about the, the prize money on a tour like this. I mean, the prize money up for grabs, I know it's a, it's a year long, and as we say, you know, one event is segmented into two yeah. months of the year. But I mean, there's big prize money up for grabs. There I is, know the guys yeah, there is, there, is, there is a lot of prize money up for grabs, but... Um, this was a hell of a lot of risk, eh? I mean, to, to, you have to be in the right place. Like I said, you never know when the waves going to be big. So the biggest, way, the biggest swell of the year might be in Tahiti, like it was, which is the furthest place you can possibly go from South Africa. It costs, I don't know, 30, 40,000 rand to get there. So you'd have to leave the day before with all your surfing equipment, and then there might not be waves. But yes, you could win $100,000 if you catch the biggest wave that day. Yeah. And how much, no of that, how much of that comes down to luck? I mean, on that wave choice. It's all luck. You, it's all luck. It is. It's all and luck. you've just <laughs> got to stay on your board, right? I mean, or no, it's just you just got to hang in there like, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, okay, it's, not, it's not all luck. I mean, obviously, it's, there's luck involved. But um, to be out there and, and to be willing, I mean, there's lots of people out there. Sometimes Mavericks, I've surfed when it's like 30, 40 feet and there's 60 guys in the water, but there's five catching waves. Like, it's easy to be out there, but to commit and to be in a situation to catch a wave is, you have to be brave. <laughs>